I want to bring you more in our top story now. Those elections taking place in Mexico. Manuel Perez Rocha is an associate fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. He joins me on Skype from Maryland. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. So we've been looking at the top three candidates throughout the day. Is a Lopez Obrador victory still the most likely scenario in your view? Thank you for having me, Marianne. I think it is the most likely. Andres Manuel López Obrador, or AMLO, as he's known affectionately because of his acronym or um, initials, he is the front runner. He has, in, he has been leading the polls for more than 20 percent uh, ahead of his main competitors, which are Ricardo Naya of the unlikely right-left coalition, uh, PRD and PAN, and Jose Antonio Miade, Mate Myth, who is the uh, candidate of the official PRI, the Institutional uh, Reform Party of Mexico. He has promised change. He's promised to uh, bring some improvement to the lives of Mexicans. I think 50 million people or more than that are living below the poverty line. But people are also very angry about uh, drug crime, violence and corruption. Does he have a clear plan to tackle these things? I think he has a clear plan as far as he's really intending to strengthen the internal market of Mexico. Mexico has been, I would say, adrift uh, with NAFTA and dependent on the U.S. economy for almost three decades. And this has provoked massive dislocation in not only in the countryside, in the rural areas of Mexico, but also hundreds of thousands of uh, small and medium companies have bankrupted um, to live the way in to large American corporations. So I think AMLO, without attacking directly NAFTA and the trade relation with the U.S., which he will try to maintain, he will try to strengthen the domestic market and give preference to domestic producers, for example, for government procurement and so on. So I think that uh, in his campaign closing speech, he said that migration should become optional and not necessary anymore. I think this is a center of, uh, of, his, of his policy, to, to help people stay at home in Mexico and stop needing to migrate to the U.S. to look for the jobs that are not being have not been created in Mexico for, for three decades, at least. You mentioned the NAFTA trade agreement. We know that the Trump administration has also imposed tariffs on Mexican steel and aluminium. Uh, and just in general, that, that the language has been very aggressive with the so-called zero-tolerance immigration policy. Do you see a spike in U.S.-Mexico tensions playing out under an Obrador presidency? I think... Uh... López Obrador will be intelligent enough. He has said that when the time comes, he will propose to President Trump a comprehensive and com treaty, a comprehensive treaty that goes beyond trade uh, with Canada and the U.S., which would also include Central American countries, because we know that uh, the CAFTA, that other agreement with Central America, is very much part of the equation of migration into the U.S. So what we need and he's proposing is a comprehensive uh, treaty to, to the relations in North America and Central America, which is what at my institute and many other uh, NGOs and so on, what we have been proposing for, for so many years. But that what we about have to see the relation beyond trade? Indeed, but what about the relationship in terms of the personalities of, of Obrador and Trump? How do you see that personal chemistry playing out? Because there is a sense that Obrador is going to be far more outspoken uh, in responding to the kind of belligerence we've had from Trump uh, compared to his predecessor. Well, that's a bet. I mean, it's difficult to say how the chemistry will, will work out, especially with Mr. Trump, that when Mr. Trump's so volatile, I would say. But Mr. López Obrador is generally very calm, uh, very... He has a long experience in governing, and he understands uh, that there are many, many different things at stake. So I don't think he will be very confrontative to Mr. Trump, as long as Mr. Trump does not escalate his... Um, his vitriol against Mexico. So I think he will try to put the cards very clear that, first of all, it has to be a relation of respect. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your analysis uh, from the Institute for Policy Studies there in Maryland, Manuel Perez Rocha. Thank you. Thank you for having me again.